Yo, yo, it's your boy Navi in Vegas with one of the best night game coaches in the world. We just finished an incredible boot camp and we thought we would give you guys some tips, some night game, night game tips because we're in one of the best destinations for night game. You know, there's some, some of the best clubs yeah. here, some of the best bars in the world. It's a party place and, we, you know, we've had some great experiences here you know with the coaches with the students or the students had an amazing experience here yeah i decided to bring dan here with with me today to give you guys some incredible tips all right dan do you want to tell the guys about yourself a little bit yeah sure so hey guys um sorry about my voice it's disappeared i've been doing a lot of screaming shouting in nightclubs ah! But uh, yeah, so I've been doing it for 12 years. Night game's been my thing. I appreciate you saying that the best, but definitely not. I'm, I'm up there. There's not many people that I know who do what I do. My style is very sort of unique, so it kind of seems like it's a more of a, a natural way of looking about it. So it, it's, it sort of shocks a lot of people how easy I make it look as such, I suppose. Well, well the reason I said you're one of the best is because of the results I've seen you do and some of the feedback I've had from like the clients, they've told me, yeah. you know, Dan's an absolute pimp. Beast. <laughs> beast <laughs> mode. Nah, so, um, beast mode, baby. I've had, some, I've had some weird compliments, but beast mode was one. Um, <laughs> like, I'm definitely not a, I'm definitely not any sort of beast, but like, so yeah, no, it's um, with Night Game, I've been doing it for a long time. I try to keep it simple, as, mo as most natural as you can be. It's not about trying to be PUA or so gaming at night. It's all about interactions. You know, we see other people that do it as well. It's fantastic. There's other guys, the other guys who do stuff like this that have their techniques is really, really good. But as simple as I try to keep it, it's just, just to conversate. Openings is obviously a good, uh, you know, good method and massively important. But one of the things I would say is mindset. Yeah. Mindset, don't get so confused about the environment. Like at the moment, it's difficult talking to you guys because we've got cars flying around this way, a traffic jam going this way because they're building the F1 track. Um, so we're trying to get it all in, but yeah, just keeping it simple is one of the things I do. Like, you know, you do your night game stuff and it's pretty good, right? So what is it that you go for? What I try to tell the guys to do is to keep it really fun because people are out to have fun. Yeah. So like funny openers work really well. My favorite opener in the nighttime is is this the best bar to find a wife in, right? Because as soon as you open like that, you go straight into a funny conversation yeah. rather than, you know, so, oh, excuse me, you know, what's the weather today? Or... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not so, that, that anyway. <laughs> see, even, even, even though what he says is correct, his style, he is, and, and, and by all means, you're really, really good. And I do watch what I do watch him and I think he's great. Now, I'm quite the opposite. And I do the things that are a little bit more boring but I rely on my conversation to make it more interesting, you know what I mean? My jokes will come from my the way I speak to them, uh, the way I charm, I'm a bit more charm and a bit more sort of um, cheekiness about it. So he's, he's off the bat, cheeky, funny, and goes that way. I'm a more of a, I'm an old boy. You know, I'm a little bit older, yeah. so I do yeah, things you, that take You've been doing this for uh, more, more than a 12, decade? Like, yeah, 12 years. Yeah. So I'm an old boy of this now. So just by, by mindset, it's important. Don't allow the environment to take over your head. Don't focus too much on people that are around you. Your objective is gonna be when you're there is to feel more relaxed in the bar. It's important to do practice sets where you can go in to invite to bars maybe once, two, three, four times before you really start approaching. Get comfortable there, get to know the staff. You feel like it could be a part of you yeah. and then start doing the processes. Yeah, that's what you're really good at. Uh, I know in London when we go out, yeah. You know, like everyone, you know, the staff, uh, you get free drinks, you know, free entry, and you've built that over a few, they, a few they, months. Yeah, they do you treat got, me well. Yeah. yeah. But what it is about you is because you talk to the staff. A lot of people, they go to the same place over and over again, but they don't talk to the staff. They, they don't give a shit about the staff. It's, it's not that they don't give a shit, they just don't think about it. It's not in their heads to do that. When you go out to pick up women, your objective is looking for a woman. My objective is who runs everything here? I want to get to know everybody. I want to, I want to feel comfortable. Like I've been in this situation. You go to a bar and you feel a bit awkward. 
you're like, yeah. oh, like, well, I don't know what to do. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, after a lot of practice, yeah. months of practice, then you become comfortable in that environment. Yeah, yeah. So would you recommend, I know we're in Vegas and this is not, maybe a lot of people don't live here, but in their home cities, longevity here. yeah, exactly. Would you recommend for the guys to go to like a specific bar or to find what the best bar is and to go there over and over again to build that kind of, uh, you know, that value inside a bar? I would, I would say find a circuit of bars. So I, I, I optimize with four different bars, at least three at a time. And every week I'd go to at least two of the three out of these bars and just go for one drink or just turn up, you don't have to drink even alcohol, you can go there and have a coffee, whatever it is. Just turn up and say hello, get used to the bar, get used to the environment. It's good just to be in one place at the bar, having a drink, having a, like water or whatever it is, and seeing the crowd coming out and the rotation of it. It's got a huge, you see, it gives you a huge benefit for the future projects you want to do there. A lot of guys are a bit more alpha and they want to go in there and they do their stuff. That's great, but I work to work, I'm talking to the guys that who are not really much like the, the big alpha guys. It's about building comfort zones, and it's important to do that. It works massively. As you say, I get treated very, very well, uh, which I'm very appreciative of. Um, and right now, it's as romantic as it's going to be. But the water's going to be behind us. That's right, guys. So if you're going to do any, any I'll do romance... That. I'll do more advice later. My voice is so, <laughs> so done. Yeah, Dan's lost his voice. Um, so that's yeah, that's that's really good tips there. Uh, and in terms of like you know, let's say if you see that very attractive girl, because they're not usually alone, no, in a bar, they're with people. So what would you recommend in that situation? Uh, like you know, with, with me and one of the other coaches, a situation came up that it was two of the girls, you know, two what we call two set, and me and one of the coaches, yeah. the other coach. What he was doing, he was making sure the friend was happy with me taking the girl back to the apartment, right? And that's when Dan came in, because Dan's more experienced than the other coach, and he made sure that the guy was actually building trust, so that, you know... It's important to build yeah. trust to be built, yeah, of course. If there's two girls at the bar, there's two techniques to do. One, if you're on your own, and these are both scenarios on your own. Uh, one is to either go to the bar, and whatever location it usually is at the bar, wait for them to order a drink, be near them, talk to one, and then introduce yourself to both. The opening, whatever the opening you want to use is, hi, how you doing? Or, you know, is this the best place to find a woman that I'm gonna marry? Do that, but always make sure you introduce yourself to both. It's important to get both uh, the girl you want to talk to and her friend involved in the conversations. That's one, that's one technique. The other one is which the one I do, which is a little bit more subtle. I'm more relaxed and chilled and waiting my time. But at any given point, one girl has to go away. She's going to go to the bathroom, she's going to go and order a drink. And if it's the one I want to talk to that's gone to the bar, I'll approach her at the bar. If she happens to go to the bathroom, I don't go to the bathroom and follow her in there. I talk to the friend. And then eventually when she comes back, I bring it all in. It's a very much a simple, like, it's a two-step version of it. Yeah. So the first one being is either you get them when we're located and, yeah. and be a ballsy guy and go into the middle of both of them. Yeah and open with that, which is the one that you said, which is quite funny. Yeah. It brings up the mood straight away. Yeah, yeah, because the open is actually not the most important part of no, an interaction. No, but your version is really good if, yeah. it's just a, if you're trying to go straight in. Yeah, um, and make it funny. Uh, make it funny yeah. instantly. Yeah, but you know, obviously you do want to go in with uh, you know an interesting way to open, but don't take it too seriously. Don't think, oh, I have to go with the perfect opener. Because I'll give you an example. Uh, we were in the, um, in the club, we came out and we were just walking around in the casino lounge and I approached this guy and said, excuse me, come to me, right? It was, you know, if you, if you write that down, that's like one of the worst openers ever, right? And then she goes, no, you come to me, right? And I was like, no, you come to me. And she was like, no, you come to me. Why are you running? Why are you running? And eventually I ended up going to her I think he's going to go to her later tonight as well. Yeah, and uh, you know, that night I was, I was with her all, 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 and you know, Dan saw her and tonight I'm going to meet her as well. So just because, you know, I tried something different, something, you know, a bit random. Um, a little bit cocky, a bit yeah, of arrogance. Yeah, a little bit, yeah, exactly. Yeah. A bit of arrogance is good. And that's the thing, you know, it's good to try different openers, you know, to enjoy yourself. That's the most important thing with Night Game, isn't it? Because yeah, that's when I, when I see Dan, he's out, 
he's always having fun. I know he said he does the, uh, the boring openers, but whenever you see him in the conversation, he's enjoying himself. He's not taking himself too seriously. And that is important I'm in quite, nighttime, I'm isn't very, it? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm more sarcastic. So I, I, do, I do sort of uh, entertain myself in most of these conversations. Uh, at the moment when I'm talking like this, no one can hear anything I'm saying, <laughs> understand anything I'm saying. So to me, it's just like I feel like I'm talking to myself. Yeah. Luckily, okay. luckily, we've got a good mic. I don't know, let's hope. So, <laughs> so, it's going to pick it up. If not, we're yeah. going to have to do this another time. We'll just use yeah. this background. <laughs> the photo editing, yeah, video yeah. editing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do a voiceover. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was perfect. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Bro, for, um, for there's one thing I wanted to like say. It was yeah. like... There are no perfect methods, right? Everyone's got their own technique. He has his version, I have my version. There's a lot of other people that have their versions. It's about what, what works for you the most. Yeah. By being focused on that and trusting yourself. Yeah. Don't allow the first step or the first rejection to be the one that puts you miles back. Like I said to you, like, we all get rejected a lot. But at the end of the day, it's not gonna affect us because I said to him, I said to in the, um, is one of the speeches I said in the uh, boot camp yeah. is that don't worry about the battle if it's lost because the war is your time and your life of experience. Yeah. So you will eventually be, win the war, but the battles here and there is okay. Yeah. It's all learning experiences, isn't oh, it? All the rejections, you know, all the failures. Oh, that's so many. Yeah. All right. So many. <laughs> so many. Too many. Too many. All right, guys. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're going to be bringing Dan again like here. <laughs> like and subscribe, baby. I uh, ring that, <laughs> press that bell so you got notifications when we come back live. Yeah, and by the way, uh, Dan, if, if the guys want to find you, uh, you know, if they want to get some night game coaching with you, yeah. uh, how should we do that? It, Contact e you. All right, email me. I'll put my email below, and then I'll send you Dan's details. Yeah, I, I, I'd rather go. I'm happy with the friends go for you. I personally, I love coaching, but it's for me, it's my coming to the end of my time. So I've only got maybe a year left of this, but everything's going to be free. This guy. Dan's going to get married, guys. He's going to be yeah. settling down. I have to settle down soon. With four, four wives and 16 wives. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tradition. That Dan is Persian, by the way. So this is, uh, yeah, this it's, is it's normal. Yeah. So he's looking for the fourth wife now. Listen, trust in Persians. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, see you in the next video. Peace.